What's going on beautiful people? Thank you for tuning in, for watching. I appreciate your appreciation of my never ending rambles and rants about the state of affairs of the world. And I love you guys, you're all amazing. And so we are going to talk some stoner talk here. Stoned ape theory, okay? <laughs> Stoned ape theory. So, what is stoned ape theory? So, Terence, this is not even really a theory, it's more of a hypothesis. It's stoner talk. And this was developed by Terence McKenna, who is no longer with us. Terence McKenna was a psychonaut. A psychonaut is someone who experimented or experiments a lot with the psychedelic state of mind. Meaning, you trip fucking balls for a lot of your life, maybe all your life, and you're essentially trying to explore your mind, and you're trying to explore your soul, because the word psychedelic means mind revealing, or soul revealing, right? So, a psychonaut is someone who decides, I'm gonna spend a lot of my time experimenting with psychedelics and figuring out what the fuck is this? How does, you know, what is this? What is it making me think? What is it making me feel? What are these insights that I'm getting about the universe and about myself and really like trying to contemplate your existence essentially, right? You're really mind revealing, soul revealing. So, Terence McKenna was a psychonaut. He experimented a lot with psychedelics and came up with a lot of weird, wacky theories and hypotheses. And they're very interesting. He's a very interesting guy. <laughs> and um, he came up with this theory. So, of course, Terence McKenna was, he popularized, uh, populi popularized, the whole five dried grams in silent darkness, right? That was his favorite method of taking mushrooms. S silence, dark room, five grammar, hit me up spirits, hit me up aliens, what's good? So, on, after, you know, a lifetime of experimentation, he came up with this theory called stoned ape theory. And it's pretty, it's pretty interesting shit. So his theory is that apes, got down from the trees at some point in history, I don't know the numbers, you know, he has like a certain historical timeline and started eating mushrooms. And as they started eating mushrooms, you know, they, 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 they experienced increased visual acuity. So they were able to see more and sense more, right? And they increased their sexual uh, excitement and their sexual libido increased and so they sort of had more sex and by default they had more babies and they kept sort of eating these mushrooms for I don't know like generation after generation after generation after generation after generation and as a result of eating these mushrooms the brain the human brain expanded in size and therefore expanded in capacity and um, it essentially makes a human what makes a human human is our ability to walk and our brain really that's that's what it is the brain our brains it's the way the way our brains pick up thoughts and their capacity this is why we're on top of the food chain as humans because of our brain because of our thinking ability our thinking faculty and so his theory is that over generations of consuming mushrooms because if you actually look, and this is what makes this hypothesis interesting, if you look at the timeline in which the human uh, human brain increased in size, it's a it's a short period in evolution time. It's like it almost like makes you think something happened there, something because evolution takes a long ass time, right? But if you look at the the increase in human the, the size of, of the human brain, it well it happened in a relatively short time, which makes you think something must have happened along the way. You know, it just makes you think like that. So his theory is that what happened along the way is this alien intelligence that that is sent to us by like aliens, maybe from other galaxies or whatever, was sent to Earth 
for us to communicate with them, with these aliens, with this alien entity. And, and, and so we started eating these mushrooms. We kept eating them and eating them and eating them over generations as apes. This mushroom opened our minds, increased the, the brain size, and most importantly, gave us language. Gave us language. Because, you know, language is peculiar. It's a, what is language? Where did it come from? His theory is that actually language originates from the re repeated use of psychedelics of psilocybin mushroom. And that's sort of how we got language and our brain increased in size and we are who we are because of the mushroom, because of, you know, consuming this thing, this psilocybin. So what this hypothesis, right, what this funny, interesting hypothesis suggests is that and what Terence McKenna suggests is that we have a symbiotic relationship with psychedelics. We have a symbiotic relationship with psilocybin mushrooms. Symbiotic means codependent. So we depend, like meaning we depend, our existence depends on the consumption of psychedelics. And that over time of using psychedelics over and over and over, the ego structure, because you know, if you look at apes, monkeys in general, there is the male hierarchy, the dominance hierarchy, meaning there you got the alpha male, the alpha ape, and he gets to fuck all the women, and he gets to shit on all the other men, right? He's the alpha. So his theory is, because of this use of psychedelics, this ego thing, this alpha, primal alpha feeling of I'm going to dominate everyone started to slowly dissipate. And he argues that at some point, I think he says 15,000 years ago or 30,000 years ago, something like that, that we kind of experience a form of paradise on earth where we experience this partnership paradise where, you know, we were getting high on mushrooms and at the full moon having orgies and really like just looking at the Travis one. Anyway, he's got a lot of wacky theories and I'm, I'm just sharing them here, okay? Theories, hypothesis even. Because none of this is really proven. Or some of it is, like the whole orgies and uh, psychedelic use which goes back, you know, a long way. Some of it is actually th a theory now, it's not even a hypothesis. So his argument, this stone ape theory, is that basically, essentially, to go back in full circle, apes started consuming these mushrooms, this alien technology, and over generations and, and mutations, the brain size grew, language was formed, intelligence, essentially, essentially the human, human or the ape gained intelligence and became a human, became self-aware, became thoughtful. And if you go and look at, um, man, I went to the zoo over the summer and, um, you know, you look at gorillas and it's really fucking trippy, man. They're sitting there and it's like, wow, I'm looking at a time machine here. They, they're like trying, like, it's almost like they're thinking, they're like gaining self-awareness. It's really, it's crazy. It's really crazy. It's like almost looking at a time machine. Oh man. That was me, whatever, fucking long time ago. His theory is that we, these apes kept eating, 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 eating these mushrooms, and then boom, we became humans because of it. And why this is so interesting, and if this ever becomes a theory, because it's a hypothesis, if this ever becomes a theory, or if even 20% of this is true, this suggests that we need fucking psychedelics, that we need mushrooms. We need, it's like vitamins for your brain and we need them. We need psychic, like this is what it suggests, right? That we need psychedelics because we actually evolved because of psychedelics. And when we stay away from something that helped us evolve and become human, then maybe that's when the ego is allowed to roam freely. And I mean, we live in an ego centric, type of world where it's all about separation and individual and me, 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 me. We live in that kind of world. And maybe it is the disappearance, what Terence McKenna argues, is the disappearance of psychedelics 
from the human diet due to climate change changes, what he argues, that maybe the disappearance of the psychedelic from our diet our hum is what caused this ego structure to sort of form itself or reform itself. And we started, again, to just basically lose sense of this oneness, this community, this tribe. Because look, man, like if you're in a tribe and you're fucking getting loaded on psychedelics at the full moon twice a month, yeah, you're not, that ego's not going to allow to be fucking roaming freely because it, you're going to get come in touch with this I am one with my tribe kind of thing. So yeah, this is his argument. His argument is that, okay, you know, we stop eating mushrooms, we stop taking psychedelics due to climate changes, disappeared from our diet, the ego structure was sort of restructured again, and sort of that male dominance hierarchy type way of being sort of re-emerged again in the form of agriculture and this is my land and these are my slaves, etc., etc. Why I find this hypothesis so interesting because it points us to a possibility and it only is a possibility that we might very well need to incorporate psychedelics in our diet, in our way of being. And I mean, natives were on board. Natives used psychedelics, right? Even in, uh, I think in America, certain native tribes are allowed, and even in Canada, they're allowed to use peyote because it's part of their religious sacraments, you know? Maybe we need to use psychedelics. Maybe, just maybe, the possibility is we have this relationship with the fungus and we need it and we need to communicate with this with these, uh, this alien intelligence through taking mushrooms because really when you take mushrooms and if you're doing five grams in silent darkness you're gonna start talking to some fucking aliens bro I'm telling you right now okay you're gonna start talking to some aliens you're gonna have voices in here you're, you're gonna be talked to by something higher and you're gonna know it and you're gonna feel it okay <laughs> you're gonna feel it and maybe it, this is an alien technology an alien is, is a term we throw it's an all-catch phrase but really these aliens could be angels aliens you don't see with your eyes you don't see with your regular five senses and because you take this mushroom you take this psilocybin mushroom and suddenly you're able to communicate with the gods, the food of the gods. That's, you know, this is the food of the gods. There is this, you know, interesting idea that the whole Adam and Eve and the apple of the fruit of knowledge, the apple, the forbidden fruit, the forbidden apple, that that apple is the psilocybin mushroom. And that when you eat it, it gives you knowledge with right and wrong. And it gives you sort of a, a compass and a sense of morality and it's it sort of this might be the fruit of the god this might be the forbidden fruit you know do not let them eat this or they will become one of us you know this is god one of the gods speaking i think this is from the bible i don't, I don't know do not let them eat this or they will become one of us because really man when you get really blasted on this shit you feel like a fucking god I don't know how else to put it. You feel like a god. You feel like you're now in the presence of God. You're in the presence of something that is, that is you. Maybe that is that is your higher self taking over when you're, when you're really blasted on mushrooms, or maybe you're sort of communicating with you know higher entities from higher dimensions that are far far wiser than this idiot human that this idiot human body that you're inhabiting that you're existing through and this limited way of your ego thinking and acting and being in the world so yeah very interesting hypothesis i mean probably most of what terry's mechanic came up with was probably not true but even if like 20 percent of all the stuff that he said is true that is wild even if like even if this whole hypothesis is bullshit but maybe some, there's some truth that links a symbiotic relationship between human and psilocybin mushrooms and psychedelics. That has serious implications. That means we got to study these psychedelics more and we got to incorporate them back into society in a productive manner that is going to help a lot of people. I made a previous video about the John Hopkins study, 
how one use of psilocybin mushrooms help people uh, get over anxiety about death and people with cancer and help them feel, you know, like they put it in their top, 66% of them or something put it in their top five experiences in their entire life, along with giving or having a first child and like having a loved one die, like it was that significant. So all I'm saying is psychedelics are worth really, really studying. I can't believe we illegalize them. I can't believe we're not studying these magnificent things that can really, really help humanity and that can really open our eyes to ourselves, to our true nature, but also give us the sense of community, the sense of, you know, oneness and feeling one with everything and wanting to genuinely help your fellow human beings and your fellow brothers and sisters. So that's it. Just wanted to discuss it. Wanted to put it out there for you guys who maybe never heard of this. If you want to listen to it from the man himself, Terence McKenna, just go and look up on YouTube Stoned Ape Theory. You will find a shit ton of things. I probably butchered some of the details of it. You know, again, I probably have to go listen to it again. I probably butchered some of the details, but essentially that's sort of the theory. That's it. I love you guys. I love every single one of you, but don't forget to subscribe or you're going to sleep with the fishes.